Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it because there's no possible way you folks will ever let me forget or live this down. So yes, this is me finally acknowledging for starters, yes, it's possible for me to look a little bit like Dog Walker, the Nostalgia Critic. Um, I'm not gonna rock this uh, look for the whole video. So while I'm adjusting that, I'll explain why this video is even a thing that is going to exist. Um, first off, I really wasn't gonna make a video about Channel Awesome and everything going on with it for a couple of reasons. The first is, I, I mean, I have my feelings and my opinions about it, but I have no personal stake in it. I don't know any of the people involved. I have never been part of Channel Awesome. I was never offered to be part of Channel Awesome. I have no dog in this race beyond just my feelings of the whole thing. And it, there have been plenty of people who also are involved who have already done great videos examining what it is that has gone on, the accusations and everything else. Um, so here's your other big reminder why I don't look like Doug Walker. I. I'm not bald. So anyways, moving along. I, like I said, I there are plenty of videos out there from people who have either done really good examinations of what's gone on or are the accounts of the people who actually um, are affected and are impacted and are former you know, producers for Channel Awesome or that guy with the glasses, which was the site it was before. I'm gonna leave this off because I actually kind of want to look as little like <laughs> like the nostalgia critic as possible. So I didn't wanna I resisted adding my voice because I figure it's just one more uninformed voice in a sea of them, and it, that's not needed. The, the voices of the people affected are out there. They are what should be getting listened to. Unfortunately, this is something that I have not been able to stop kind of thinking about and I don't, I don't have real life friends to talk this out with because while I'm friends with plenty of other um, creative people, most of them are either writers or podcasters and their interest in hearing about what's going on with something like Channel Awesome is minimal if not non-existent. So I gotta talk this out for my own sanity and so that means you folks get this video. So in case you have not caught up or kept up with everything that's been going on. I'll try and bullet point this really quick because I don't want this to be a recap or my reaction to what happened. I want to try, if I'm going to make a video, I want to try and make something that is a little bit different from a lot of what else is already out there. So recapping real quick, Channel Awesome is the home of most famously the Nostalgic Critic, but also a whole bunch of other producers. Um, they It has a number, a lot of people who were aggregated through the site, um, people like some jerk with a camera, I believe Chris Stuckman at, at some point, Linkara, Cinema Snob. Um, there's a long, long, long list of folks who either previously or until very recently um, were producers for Channel Awesome. Now, I actually did not know a ton about this because my main knowledge of Channel Awesome is, first of all, fairly young. People were pointing out that they thought I looked like Doug Walker before I even started watching Nostalgia Critic. I started watching it uh, about a year ago and my main knowledge of them is through YouTube and the Channel Awesome YouTube page only puts up the in-house uh, products of Channel Awesome itself. It doesn't, you know, all the producers who are were on the site have their own YouTube channels and some of them I did follow, um, some of them I still do. But I, I'm not following, I'm not. Sub, I'm no longer subscribed to Channel Awesome. I haven't watched the latest video they put out. Um, so there was a document put out a couple of weeks ago. And basically what seems to have happened is a bunch of creators and former creators, former producers for Channel Awesome basically got together and put and compiled a list of grievances and instances of what they considered to be unprofessional, improper, um, and or downright skeevy behavior on the part of people in the upper end of Channel Awesome. And like I said, it's 73 pages. And I think that that was a, in a lot of ways a big thing because there had been word over time as various producers had cut ties with the site, um, folks like Lindsay Ellis and Obscurus Lupa, that there was some sort of behind the scenes tension. But I think until all these folks got together and compiled all their complaints in one place, the weight of it, nobody had really seemed to appreciate or add that up. Now that in and of itself didn't have to be as big a problem as it is. What has made everything worse, and again, I'm not going through the original documented complaints. I'll link to it down below if you want to read it. Um, 
What has made everything worse has been Channel Awesome's responses. At present, there have been two. Their first one was a complete and total non-apology, literally using the phrase, we're sorry you felt that way. Oh boy, um, which is probably the worst wording they could have possibly used. Uh, you know, it's a great big sorry, not sorry. Um, in the wake of that response, a whole bunch of people left the site. Then they put out a second response, which was a more targeted response, um, responding to some of the specific allegations in the 73-page document. Only a handful, honestly. There's a lot that they don't address at all. Given what they did choose to address, it's possible to read it either as, this is the only stuff they, ha they can make any case against, and you take it as the rest is true because they're not addressing it, or they're just trying to cherry pick stuff that, that they feel they can be smearing the producers about. And the whole tone of the second statement they put out is very much smearing. It uses the terms disgruntled and um, vindictive to describe the people who were relaying their experiences. And again, I'm not going through it point for point, but the, the things that they did choose to address, they either addressed poorly or failed to completely back up their assertion that uh, the original claim was wrong or the few instances where they did back it up. What they backed it up with is kind of weak. It's not great. And even then, even if we take it for granted that, you know, these few handful of things they addressed aren't the case, there's still, um, there's still pages and pages and pages of stuff that they didn't address. So after the second response, as of my recording of this, there are only two producers who are not direct Channel Awesome employees who are still with the site. One of whom, even though he has not officially cut ties, has removed Channel Awesome banners from his Twitter and his site, etc. And the other one appears to only be sticking around for the sake of trolling so that he can claim to be last man standing after everybody else bails. So, is there a way for this possibly to survive, for this possibly to move forward? Because let us not forget, there have been a number of YouTube channel scandals, for lack of a better term, uh, in the last year or so. You had Andy Signore over at Screen Junkies. You had um, Adam Blompy at What Culture. And both those channels are, are still around. There's a significant difference, though, because even though Adam Blompy was at that point kind of the face of What Culture, he was not... You know, there were plenty of other people behind him, plenty of other writers, plenty of other presenters who could step up and take things over in his absence. Uh, I just had to pause for a snowplow. It's April in Vermont. Yay. Um, and then in the case of What Culture, Andy Signore was very much uh, one of the driving forces of, sorry, not What Culture, Screen Junkies. Andy Signore was one of the driving forces of what made that thing what it was. He created on his trailers, which, is, which was really the, the runaway hit for that channel. Uh, they still had other people on staff. They had corporate, there were people above him. And it was the same with Adam Blompy. Unfortunately, Channel Awesome, that's not the case. The people that the accusations and allegations are being leveled against are the people at the top. So it's not just a matter of being able to cut them loose and the thing keeps going. I think at this point, the Channel Awesome brand can effectively be considered dead. It has little to no value at this point. And certainly Channel Awesome, as it existed, as a site that was an aggregate of, of not only their own direct content, but a bunch of other associated producers, that is, you can consider that dead. There's no way that can continue. That does not necessarily mean that we've seen the last of the people behind it, uh, specifically in regards to Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic, and Rob Walker, his brother and his primary producing partner. The, it is possible that they could still come out of this. I'm not going to say unscathed, they will be scathed, but it's possible that they could recover from this because while they do not go unnamed in the, um, in the document, their names come up less frequently and in not as many truly egregious instances as the name Mike Mashad, who um, is a guy who I know very little about because he's not one of the public faces of Channel Awesome. I was a little bit, it was odd for me to find out that he was even a person that existed because it seemed like everyone, even behind the scenes people, showed up now and then. Now, here's the thing. The Channel Awesome brand is, as I said, completely tainted at this point. The Nostalgia Critic brand 
might have a shot. And honestly, the Nostalgia Critic brand is probably stronger than the Channel Awesome brand was in the first place. It Honestly, its association was probably why Channel Awesome had much value initially in the first place. And then, it, you know, we gained more from the other producers, but they're all gone now. So, strictly speaking, what would probably be the smartest thing would be for Doug and Rob Walker to cut ties with Mike Mashad um, and as much as they are able to without being able to be proven wrong, because I don't know what the case is, but if they can lay the blame for, say, the statements that came out at the feet of Mashad and said, he wrote these, we didn't, we're out, they could possibly recover. Because if you look at fan community responses, there is a certain reluctance to put uh, too much blame on my, on uh, Doug and Rob from the fans who, who haven't jumped shipped or who, who feel really bad about having done so. Now, again, that's not me saying they're blameless in this. I don't, I can't make that statement. I don't know enough. But looking at what fans are thinking, there does seem to be a, a decent contingent of fans who, who want to be able to be on the side of Rob and Doug. I don't think anybody cares about being on the side of Mike Mashad. So that's, that would be the best thing they could do. There's a problem with that, though. My, now, the exact degree of this seems to be something that's in dispute, but Mike Mashad owns anywhere from a majority stake in Channel Awesome to actually being the sole owner of the brand and the Nostalgia Critic IP. How that even happened in the first place, I don't know. I can't speculate about. But if nothing else, he, he holds a very significant chunk of the rights of the intellectual property that is the Nostalgia Critic. So if Doug and Rob simply walked away, they could not take the Nostalgia Critic with them. They couldn't use the name, they couldn't use the look, they couldn't use the same format of videos. All that would be remaining with whoever controls the IP. And you want an example of how that plays out fairly recently. Stephen Colbert, um, now hosting The Tonight Show, he was sued or if not sued, it got a cease and desist. I forget exactly what it was, but he was served legal notice from Viacom when he appeared on that show in his persona of Stephen Colbert from The Colbert Report. Because that, even though it was his name, it's his legal name, it's him, that version of him was very much a character. It was a caricature of a certain sort of thing. And when he appeared in that character on his other show, the folks who own the intellectual rights to the character of Stephen Colbert sued the real Stephen Colbert over his use of that. So this would put Doug and Rob in a position where they would have to come up with something that is not the Nostalgia Critic and then try and build that. And I can see why at the very least they'd be very reluctant to do that because they ended the Nostalgia Critic once before uh, a while back and tried to do other projects, none of which took off and ultimately they revived the Nostalgia Critic. And I think they don't have as many illusions at this point that they can carry an audience without the strength of that character and of that brand and what those reviews were. Now, of course, everything I've said up to this, uh, this point presumes that they even want to cut ties with Mike Mashad. I don't know the nature of that relationship, but speaking strictly from a business standpoint, that, that would be the very wise thing to do. The question is what they're left with if they choose to do that. And again, depending on what other future things come out, what other details we get, it may turn out that Rub and Dog, uh, Rub, Doug and Rob, are themselves separate from Mashad, so tainted anyways that they may not be able to be, be uh, you know, do a rebuild regardless. But from the view that I have at this point, it is possible if they could get control of the Nostalgia Critic as an intellectual property away from Mashad. If they could either buy him out or you know, what, whatever they have to do. The problem is, uh, or at least the potential problem, because again, I don't know. I don't know any of these people personally. But the picture of Mike Mashad that's painted by the, by the original document and then also by the responses because general consensus, um, again, uh, not proven, but consensus from uh, a number of people seems to be that it the responses feel most likely to have been written by him. Um, 
So he does not come across as the kind of person who would go, guys, I'm, I'm a brick on the neck of this thing here. You guys do what you can with it. I'll leave you to it. That's not, that's not the, uh, the man that's painted um, in, the, in the documents that are, that are available. So that, that would leave them in a position where they may not be able to get control of what is undeniably they, their brand. It's what they make their living on is the nostalgia critic at the end of the day. It's what Channel Awesome was built on the back of. It was their most lucrative thing and probably still remains so, but at this point, and it, it also might account for the lack of a direct response from Doug and Rob, because so far the responses have come just from Channel Awesome, which is a company and not a person. And I have to wonder if they are simply, if they're either unwilling or are somehow hamstrung by possible retribution from Mashad over being able to put their own statement out there. I mean, it is, there's something very awkward about the fact that the responses have come in the form of these two statements, um, you know, from the company, which is faceless. And on the, on the Channel Awesome YouTube channel, uh, there has been silence except for the release of one episode of The Nostalgia Critic, which was probably already finished. Um, but there's something very tone deaf about the choice to put that out instead of a response of any kind, shape or form. Uh, it just comes across as very callous, as very not caring. Again, th there's been no apology for any of this, for any of, of what has gone on. And, and even the stuff that they do dispute, they don't dispute well, and a lot of it they don't dispute. It is, it's just an, a very unfortunate situation. And I don't know what I hope for at this point. Because as, as I said, I don't know any of these people personally. I do certainly hope that um, people who are currently affiliated with the site, who are not named, in the accusations, people like uh, Tamara Chambers, Malcolm Ray, uh, Walter Benaziak, um, Jim, I forget his last name, but the guy, the guy who does uh, the props and such. I, I hope that they, they come away more or less unscathed. I know there's already been some nasty stuff thrown at them by um, people who are either just trolling or have very misdirected anger, which is unfortunate. Because it is worth noting that by and large, the complaints in the original document are either from several, are, are either or, or both, um, from incidents several years ago or from longtime contributors. There's not much there from newer people. Uh, so it, which again, could have given, the, if, if their response had been something along the lines of, we're very sorry, you note the majority of the dates on this and notice that there are fewer in incidences from more recent dates. We feel we have improved, we will continue to improve. Here's how we're gonna do that. If they put that out as a response, I'm not gonna say there would have been no fallout, but there wouldn't have been what there is because really the mass exodus of producers has been in the wake of not the document, but the responses. And it so often these things become worse than they need to be because of the way that entities respond to them. I'll tell you, I'll try and keep this quick. There was a gay club that opened up in, uh, in Burlington, in Vermont, uh, I don't know, a year or so back. I'm not gonna get into full details, but it chose a name that some uh, in the local LGBTQ community felt was transpho transphobic. Um, and while I don't argue that, that it was not the intention of the owner to do that, his response to that was not, oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you know, it, and I'm not even saying he needed to necessarily change the name, but his response was, there's nothing wrong with this. You're wrong for being offended. You need to come out and support me because there's no other exclusively gay bar in the area. It was a big middle finger to the people who took offense and everything spiraled out of control from there. He kept doubling down and lashing out at the community he was trying to build as a customer base until eventually the whole thing just 
unfolded. And these sorts of just bad responses, because I, I figure there's there's basically, when something like this happens, there's there's three kinds of responses you can get from a company. You can get an apology and an acknowledgement that something went wrong, which will usually be met with some degree of criticism or cynicism, but probably the least amount of it. You know, if you can lay out, we acknowledge these problems, here's how we intend to fix them, that's going to mitigate the damage the best. Um, if you put out a response that just feels like it was generated by a machine that says, we are very sorry, we hope to improve, but don't lay out a plan for how to do that or acknowledge any of the specific things or specific people who were hurt, that is gonna, that's not gonna garner you really much benefit of the doubt at all, but it won't make things much worse. Unfortunately, when you're dealing with companies or organizations that are run by one, two, three people, as opposed to, you know, because the first two things that I laid out, that's what you get from a large company, like with a board of directors or whatnot. You get these really mechanical responses that don't mean much, but usually don't make the situation too much worse. When you've got companies owned by just a handful of people, people's anger and their emotions bleed into these responses because there isn't a check, there isn't somebody over them. There isn't a committee of people looking over this to make sure this isn't a horrible, horrible way to respond to this. Um, and that's that's just what has happened. And so often in in almost everything, in business and politics and whatever, it's how you respond when something has gone wrong. That is what will decide how big the problem is. The problem exists either way. You have the ability to mitigate it or make it worse. And they've just made it worse. And I don't have an overall point that I'm landing at. As I said, this was largely just um, for me. I needed to get this out. I needed to talk this out because I'm hoping it will occupy my mind less now that I've said stuff that I've talked about it. And again, I don't think anybody should be coming to me as a source on this. I don't plan to do another video on it. I'm not, you know, gonna do a breakdown of, of everything that's gone on. I would encourage people to seek out the account, the original document, the accounts and the videos made by the people who were in that document, um, whether they put out videos, did tweets, whatever. Um, there are some very good, um, look at and breakdowns that aren't just hot takes that are um, detailed looks at the document and the responses that they, they are out there and I would encourage you to seek those out if you want or if you just want to stick your head in the sand and ignore the term channel awesome every time you see it uh, I would not blame you I think having now you know talked all this out that I think that's kind of where I am right now. I don't want to think about it anymore, which is why I had to make this video. So that'll about wrap it up for this one, guys. The whole Channel Awesome mess. What do you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Please keep it respectful. I know this is a topic that has heated a lot of people, both either for or against uh, the channel and the people involved or the people who have made the accusations. So as always, I ask that you keep it respectful. Um, but yeah, let's let's see if we can talk it out and uh, and then move on from it, at least for ourselves, because um, I'm I'm not saying that anyone involved in it needs to just move on. They need to process however they need to process. So. If you didn't find this completely just depressing and bumming you out, you can follow me on Twitter, support me on Patreon, etc., etc. Links for all that stuff, as well as the link to the original document that I mentioned. That's all down in the description. So until next time. This council is adjourned.